Welcome back. So let's just change the drawing a little bit because we actually changed this name. The context is now actually called customer app context. So just to have the same naming, very simple. There we go. Now we're going to start talking about the unit of work now, but I just want to do kind of a recap of why it's valuable to use a unit of work. Why not just save data directly in the order repository that already has the context so we can save it right there if we want to. Why do you want a unit of work to actually wrap this repository? Well, it's actually, there's a, a very valid reason to do this. And that is, if I put inside the auto repository directly, I can put in the save change, like I just said, like this. If I put that in here, that would mean every time, every time where I create an order, right away without anything else, uh, without being able to do anything else, I'll save the changes directly to the database. So whenever I do a create order, boom, it's saved in the database. Create order, boom, it's saved in the database. But what if I figured out that actually I need to do maybe create four different orders in the database. And after creating two of them, I got an exception for some reason, then I didn't want to do the last two. So I wanted to roll back. I wanted to avoid actually having these two in the database because that, that would actually now be too late because I already saved the changes for each order. So I can't kind of, I don't have a, a transaction system, meaning that I don't have a way for me to roll back all the different things I'm doing in a single transaction for the database. I hope that makes sense, but that's why the unit of work comes into play because by removing the saved changes from the repository, this guy is now what we call a pure in memory repository. So it only knows data and how to show data and, and keep data in memory. That's the repository patterns, real responsibility to store data in memory from the database. So we don't have it all in persistence layer. We pull the data we require right now in memory. That's the repository pattern. And then the unit of work will say, I'm now going to do something. I'm going to create a couple of orders. And when we're done, then we'll save all the orders in one request for the database. In one call to the database, we'll save all the orders. Or if something goes wrong, we'll return all the other orders we just saved, right? So that's the unit of work. It's going to, it's a way for us to move the responsibility of storing data to the database into a unit of work that kind of has a few, um, a, a transaction, that, that we can actually launch whenever we are ready to fire all the requests as one. Let, let me give you a very simple example of this. I'm going into the customer service. And in the customer service, we have a create function right here. Let's try and copy that. And let's say we wanted to create another function. Let's just make it void for now. And that function actually would get a list of customers from the outside. Let's say this is where we would get these uh, 50 customers that we want to save at once, or let's just say four to make it easier. So we're going to get a list of customers from the outside. And we're going to call this create all like this. So we're going to be able to create a list of customers. Let's do that. Now, step one is, of course, to create a unit of work like we did in the create. And then here, we're going to say for each of those customers, I want to make a for each loop here. So I'll do for each loop, I'll double tap. And I'll just put in the customers here as the collection. And just each of these guys will be the customer. This is very basic running of uh, for each loop. Now, the second thing I want to do is just remove this and go in here actually. And for each of my customers now, I want to create the customer. Now notice if I just remove this for now and look at this, I'm saying customer repository create. And if this was actually saving to the database now, it would create every time a request save to the database, save to the database, save to the database inside my loop here. So if I was creating 50 customers right now, because I have some kind of bad script that can create a lot of customers, save, 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 save. We would kind of mess up the database because we would send so many requests and it would have to work so much. But if we go in and say, since the repository panel right now doesn't save changes, we can go in now and say, it's okay that you save, uh, that you create in memory requests, so you prepare to save all these changes, but you're not going to actually send a request for the database until I do unit of work complete. So this guy will be pulled outside the for each loop, and when all the different guys are created, then I'll save the changes for the context, so if I jump into the unit of work here again, notice the complete, all it does is actually it says save changes and we're done. That's all we had to do. Now the changes are saved in one big unit of work, one big transaction. So no matter how many, uh, sorry, into the service again, no matter how many customers I have in my list, these guys will actually be saved with one request now. Where if I had the old version, it would actually go in, um, if I had the old version where I save each time I actually go in and call the create, I would have maybe 50 different saves to the database. That's the value of the unit of work.